As we walk up and down the streets of America these days, Detroit or Cleveland or Atlanta or New York or Los Angeles, <coughs> God forbid, um, Beverly Hills, um, there are uh, these fellows on the street with shell game, you know? Oh, sure. Well, with I... a little P underneath it. Well, <coughs> let me show you. Or I'm convinced you a... they're crooked. Oh, yes. This is not a game. This is a swindle. And right. people, uh, although... Uh, it seems simple at the time, the, the cupidity and uh, the cupidity of people never, fail, never fails to amaze me how people can get involved into something like this and especially play for money. Well, the other day, I'll tell you how it happened. I was watching one of these men do his cupid cupidity thing and uh, a fellow next to me said, Mr. Susskind, you going to do that? And I said, no. And he said, why? And I said, it's crooked. He said, how? And I said, I don't know how, but it's crooked. He said, how could it be crooked? That man just won $10. Well, let me show you. That me... man is his shill. Of course. That's called the mob. The mob. And the man who is the operator is called the star. Then they have lookouts, possibly two, and then they have two called the gate, which stand in back of the crowd to push the crowd into the star. Right. Huh? Right. Now, uh, this is as old as a three-card mod. It goes back. It's possibly 200 years old. No one seems to know the... Started in America? I would think so. Uh, it started, as a matter of fact, with river, uh, river uh, boat gamblers. Uh, there was Soapy Smith and a few others uh, with colorful names. Mm -hmm. Now, these shells are nothing more than walnut shells from Italy mm -hmm. and AP. And there's a doggerel that was written about this swindle. It goes something like this. A little fun just now and then is relished by the best of men. You may have nerve, you may have plenty. Five will draw you ten, and ten will get you twenty. A little game of hanky-poo. Two shells for me, and one for you. Hi, diddle, diddle, it's the one in the middle. Now, David, you know as well as I do that that pea cannot be in two places at the same time. That's right. I do not palm it out. Now, watch. You have a good vantage point. I merely move the shells in this direction, that direction, assemble them, and I ask you the pertinent question, which of these three shells do you think contains the pea? Turn it over. I'm so glad. If we were playing for money, you would have lost. Yeah. Normally, they would go for this one. It's always the one that you least suspect. To go one step further, the shells might be held in this particular fashion, <laughs> totally eliminating my left hand. Now, watch this. I'm doing this Gene Kennedy's way. I'm not <laughs> commenting. I'm just watching. All right. The pea is covered with a center shell. The shells are moved in that direction or in that direction. It should remain tantamount to paramount. That P is always under the middle one. Mm -hmm. However, when the monies are placed and offered for a bet, that P is no longer where you expect it to be. It's not this one. So I'll give you a chance between these two. Which one, David? Go for it. <laughs> it's not that one. It's not this I one. It's I had always it. the one that you least suspect. To go one step further. Am I working too slow? Should I speed it up or slow it down? Uh... I'll slow it down. All right, slow it down. Sometimes a glass is brought into play, anything that might cover any one of the three shells. Right. Now, this is when they're really buttering up the pigeon, the apple, the sucker. Yeah, me. The big bet. Or? The P is first covered with the center shell. Not palmed up. Move forward, covered with the glass. And believe it or not, during that transaction, that P is no longer where it's supposed to be. As I said before, it's always the one that you least suspect. To go one step further, I'll now perform what is called, commonly called, a bust-out move. When I get through, you'll understand why. By totally eliminating this shell, I shall only use these two shells. Okay. All right? Yep. But leave that one here. Okay. Because, all right. Okay. Now, look. There's nothing here. Right. Nothing here. Right. There's the P. Right. And you have a good vantage point. So if you watch carefully, you'll right. see something transpire right here. Right. Now, remember, there's nothing here. Right. Not here. There it is. Okay, I'll I'm make it watching. easy as pie for you. At the count of three. One, two, three. You caught it, I think. You saw something. The truth? Uh, I thought I did. No, well, tell me. Till I met you, I thought I... Go ahead, go for it. Turn it over. It's not there. It may have gotten into David, grease. It's not here, and this is why it's called the bust-out move. Now, to go one step further, let me show you, illustrate, because we were discussing in between takes. Yeah. Uh, if something fools the mind, it will definitely fool the eye. It's not so much hand quicker than the hand eye. Quicker than yeah. the eye. That may be true in boxing, but right. I could firmly 
make a statement and say, David, you think that I may use more than one P when in fact I don't. That's the truth of the matter. But now I'll show you the illusion of the illusion. If I wanted to, of course you wouldn't do this in, on the normal play. I could convince you that I had a P beneath that shell, a P beneath that shell, a P beneath that shell, and of course a P beneath that shell. When the truth of the matter is there's no P beneath any shell. But if you want to believe there's a P beneath that shell, there's a P beneath that shell, there's a P beneath that shell. When the truth of the matter, David, is that there's no P beneath any shell. That's what they call the nuts. Excuse me. I got to get a handkerchief. Um, Frank Garcia, if a person walking down the street sees a man playing with some shells and a P, shouldn't he just walk faster to oh, where yes. he's going? I agree with you. I never get involved. You know, people say, Gee, you must be a wealthy man. I'm wealthy in knowledge. I know a lot of things, and one of the reasons why I took or gravitated to uh, the pleasure of exposing crooked gambling for the public is because my father, may he rest in peace, was taken for a sizable amount of money uh, when I was one or two years old. He was sold fictitious stock, and I, I have the, the stock, and it looks impressive as hell with the ribbon and the embossing and the notary public and everything. It was all a sham. And I took it upon myself to uh, learn what and I have. Avenge. And avenge. Yeah. I want to ask you a question. We, um, we hear about great, uh, well, recently, for example, in the press, yeah. Frank Sinatra and Dean Martin went into an Atlantic City uh, nightclub, what do you call it, a gambling uh, casino. Casino. And have you got your deck of cards? Yes. Uh, they were playing blackjack. Mm -hmm. uh, Frank Sinatra was playing an engagement down there. Right. He was probably only getting a million and a half that week. <laughs> and, um, and doing one show a night, no right. doubt. I wasn't there, but that's his general technique. And uh, he, uh, after performing and everything, went into the gambling club to play blackjack with his right. buddy, uh, Dean Martin. They've right. been friends for 40 years. Okay. Frank is 69 years old? Something like yeah. that. Anyway, he went in there. And he sat down at the blackjack table. He demanded of the dealer uh, that the dealer deal one pack of cards. And remove the cards and from the shoe And remove the shoot. The, the shoot is a thing in a... It's the, called a shoe. The shoe yeah. is the thing that... You, they have five or six decks right. of cards in there. Exactly. And you play blackjack. Let's play blackjack to show them how blackjack is played. All right. Okay. Well, the deck first must be shuffled. Yeah. Well, let's assume it's shuffled. Okay, okay, and I, then... Uh, his deck has been shuffled. There's his turn. The dealer here yeah. gives you a card. Face up. Up, face up. Gives face himself. Down, face up, and this yeah. one goes. Now, I have an 11. This is a very fortuitous hand, because I'm entitled to take one card down, not show it to him, and try to get as close blackjack as 21. Right. Uh, the idea... The blackjack is a, is a picture card and an ace. Right. But 21 is a damn good hand, because it For adds sure. up to a That's 21. Right. A blackjack automatically wins, but this is an 11, and therefore if I could get a picture card, I'd have a 21. That's right. He has a 7 showing, the best he can have in his hand at the moment. Not really, but it would be like a 17. Well, here, I'll show you. I have a uh, 17. 17. So, so he I can't to, draw. I can't draw. In a nightclub in this world, in America, or France, or Italy, or England, or wherever, and Brazil, and Rio, and, you know, uh, he can't draw. 17, he's got to no, stay. No, I must stand. I must yeah. stand. 16, he must draw. That's, that's right. Now, I have an 11, so I would say to him, I'd double my bet. That's right. Suppose I had $10 out there, and 11, give, and I can only take one card, gives me the right to double my bet. So right. I make it $20. Now, give me the card. Now, the thing is that I can give you the 6, which he, lies on top of the deck, unbeknownst to you, see? There's a 6. Yeah. Or you, can give, a six. Yeah. Or, or you can give me a deuce. Or I could give you a deuce, or I could give you an ace. An ace. Or if an ace would be death. An ace would no, be death. No, not necessarily. No. A day, an ace. That would be 12. This can be 11. That's right. Or, or it one. can be 1. So you have 12. This is a difficult hand to explain to a public, isn't it? Well, no. I'm 11. So now I'm 12. I can only take one card. This is, this is murder. 12. See, 12. And what happened? What happened in the guys knowing that the top card was uh, the 6? Let, let, let me leave it face up. Right. And knowing that the second card was an ace, yeah. I simply 
noted the card by doing this. Look, I had one card face down. Yeah. As you were looking at your yeah. cards and I was looking at mine, watch what happens here. I'm peeking or oh. piking. Oh, oh. So I know that's oh, a six. Oh. He, he knows what's coming. You see? Yeah. Now, if I wanted to, I could peek two cards, so I know the second card is the ace. Yeah. Now, by virtue of the fact that I know that the top card, and this would be face down, and I wanted to bust you, I would do this. See, I'll do it in if he gives me the six, eight and three, eleven, and six is seventeen, it's a tie. It's a push. It's a push. That's correct. Nobody wins. And he, that's a waste of time for the house. So in slow motion... You've got to lose for the house to be happy. Here's what I did. I, I dealt a second deal. Do it again. All right. I merely pushed off two cards as one. Yeah. Took the bottom card. <laughs> and that's the name of the game. Oh, boy. Let's see if we get a better hand. Let's throw those away. All right. We'll okay. Bury those. Okay. Now let's steal another one quickly. Okay, he gives me a nine. That's a pretty good card. Now, here again, I got an 11. The Joker's, Joker's not a card. Okay. Now, this is a moment of truth. He's got a queen showing. If he has a 10 in there, that's a 20. You're in trouble. It's hard to be a 20, but what would be the 20 would be a 21. I can go along. Well, anyway, I'm going to draw down. I'm going to I get the same $10 up. Okay. I'm going to make it 20 because I got an 11. Give me the card. I'll give you the four. <laughs> and that's the and this of course 19, 19 pays 20 and you see i've got 15. i'm only allowed to draw and one card blessed. you could have given me anything right that's right let me show you something that's interesting uh okay. david that's not boring what you've just done you no 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 i hope gene kennedy liked it uh these are pieces of paper that are used by bookmakers when they book Right. Bets. Bets. Uh, for, well, you can see it's paper, very much yeah. like tissue paper. Right. But you can put uh, a, a bet for, not on this surface, four to one, uh, twenty dollars, whatever. You said LaGuardia Airport for it. All right. Okay. Whatever. Okay. Now then, there's, mind you, there's no cash being transacted when you book a game right. with a bookie. Right. It's all credit lined. I did that today. All right, could be ten thousand, twenty thousand, could be. No, it was uh, fifty thousand. I bet. Well, okay. Yeah. <coughs> they record the bets on paper. Mm -hmm. There are three types of paper: rice paper, jelly paper, and lightning paper, which is what this is. Mm -hmm. And during the course of a police raid, watch yeah. what happens. Don't be shocked. Mm -hmm. This is the bet. Right. In case of an arrest, this is conclusive evidence that yeah. the man is a bookie and that right. he's. He has a bookie operation. Right. This Jeez. leaves no ash, no paper, no evidence. Well, but uh, who's got the, how's it, the memory, how does he... Uh, well, they have, they transfer these bets onto a ledger. Right. Which they keep for safekeeping. But look, I'll do this again for the viewing audience. No paper. Right. No bets, no evidence. Now, Blackjack. If you go into a gambling casino in the city of London, and I have many times, or you go in uh, Las Vegas, I hate Las Vegas. They have, they have a saying in Las Vegas, uh, in any gambling casino, if you bet fast, you can't last. If you bet slow, you got to go. And that's the truth of the matter. That's great. Think about it. If you bet fast, you can't last. If you bet slow, you, you got to go. go. And we've got to go. We'll be back in a minute.